Yes, thank you, sir. Hi, good evening to everyone. Today I'm going to discuss about uh, uh, surfactant therapy and different modes of different techniques for surfactant administration. Uh, let us see uh, whom to give the, whom to give this surfactant therapy. Next slide, please. Let us see which neonates benefit most from this surfactant and who needs it most. Mainly preterm neonates who are born less than 34 weeks gestation with RDS stabilized and CPAP and requiring a PEEP of more than 6 cm water and a FIO2 of more than 0.3 to maintain saturation of more than 91%. And even in late preterm and early term neonates, uh, those who are presented with RDS and requiring an FIO2 of more than 0.4 and PEEP of 7 cm water. And even neonates who developed severe meconium aspiration syndrome and severe bacterial pneumonia requiring invasive ventilation with an oxygenation index of more than 15 are the ideal candidates who will be benefited from this surfactant therapy. Next slide. Next slide, please. So European guidelines recommend what is the ideal time is early rescue surfactant therapy is more beneficial when compared with the prophylactic or late surfactant therapy as it reduces the duration of mechanical ventilation and development of the BPD in neonates. Next slide, please. So now that we have known whom to give and what is the ideal time to give the surfactant, let us see what which type of surfactant will benefit and what dose. Uh, many international bodies and European guidelines recommend proactant alpha at a dose of 200 milligram per kilo is better as, uh, next slide, please, as it reduces the incidence of mortality and then decreases the BPD. Next slide, please. When proactant alpha given at a dose, next slide, please. Hello, ma'am, next slide. Can you go for next slide? When potent surfactant given at a dose of 200 milligram per kg, we have uh, many studies have shown that there is a lesser need for re redosing and reduce the risk of pulmonary hemorrhage, air leak, and risk of hemodynamically significant PDA. Next slide, please. So there are different techniques of surfactant administration, such as Insure, in which we intubate the neonate, give surfactant, and extubate to the CPAP. And later they have developed lesser invasive techniques, such as less, uh, less invasive surfactant administration in which the surfactant is administrated to the neonate uh, by direct under direct laryngoscopy by using magil forceps in a spontaneously breathing infant supported on the CPAP by using magil forceps. Whereas in mist, surfactant it is administered without the use of the magil forceps to reduce the trauma caused by the magil forceps. And newer devices such as uh, laryngeal mask airway are also used to administer the surfactant in neonates who weigh more than 1.5 kilo with a uh, using the size of one and in future there may be a role for nebulized surfactant as such. Next slide please. So why insure? Because if babies fail nasal, nasal CPAP, it is associated with serious neonatal morbidity, thereby increasing the incidence of pneumothorax, death and BPD. So for those infants who fail RDS by giving insure, it has shown many beneficial effects by decreasing the duration of mechanical ventilation, air leak and lesser incidence of development of the BPD. Next slide, please. So are there any predictors for CPAP failure? Those neonates who require FIO2 more than 0.3 in the first one to two hours of life and lower gestational age and requirement of PEEP more than five centimeter of water, these are the ideal these are the ideal candidates who will benefit more from surfactant along with the CPAP. So overall, the effectiveness of surfactant depends on complete course of antenatal steroids, optimal use of delivery room CPAP, and avoiding other comorbid conditions such as development of hypodermia, preventing oxygen toxicity by using the blender, and preventing hospital acquired infections. Next slide, please. Insure. Insure is a technique in which the surfactant is administered using an endotracheal, uh, using a feeding tube through the endotracheal catheter, followed by positive pressure breaths to distribute the surfactant to the neonatal lungs for, uh, later extubated to the CPAP. Next slide, please. Ne insure may not be successful in neonates who present with severe birth asphyxia and those who have not received complete course of antenatal steroids, and those who have uh, received surfactant after 72 hours, and even extreme premature neonates, and those who present in the shark. There are few studies which compare the birth weight and RDS severity. In one study, they have found that babies who weigh less than 750 grams, the chances of insured failures are high. And in a, another study, those who weigh less than 1,000 grams, insured failure rates are high. And severe RDS presenting as P, requiring a PF ratio of uh, those who have a PF ratio less than 218 and alveolar to arterial PO2 less than 0.44 and uh, hypercarbia of more than 50 mmHg and severe radiological changes in the chest X-ray. Next slide, please. So there are some studies in which when insure is combined with NIPPV when compared it with nasal CPAP, 
they had showed the decreased mechanical ventilation at the end of seven days of age and decreased extubation failures, decreased physiological BPD and oxygen requirement at 36 weeks post menstrual age. Next slide, please. So, however, as with any technique, even injury is associated with some risks such as uh, mucosal trauma while during the placement of ET tube and requirement of positive breaths for the surfactant distribution in the neonatal lungs. Even few uncontrolled positive breaths when given to the neon, uh, neonate, there may be chances of lung injury and development of the bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And for in, while during intubation, when CPAP is removed, there may be loss of PEEP or functional residual capacity in neonates. And when given, uh, there may uh, when we use sedation, there may be chances of decreased spontaneous breathing in neonates. Next slide, please. So to reduce the risk, the few studies have come up with the gentler mode of surfactant administration, such as LISA. LISA is a technique in which surfactant is given to the neonates through either endotracheal catheter or feeding tube using magil forceps and a direct laryngoscopy without intubation in a spontaneously breathing infants supported with the CPAP. So in CPAP, the spontaneous breathing helps in the surfactant distribution, whereas in Insure, we need to give a positive breaths to uh, distribute the surfactant, so thereby reducing the chances of the BPD. Next slide, please. How LISA helps? LISA, LISA allows combining the surfactant delivery with spontaneous breathing uh, as compared to ensuring which we need the positive pressure breath or ventilation to distribute the surfactant. And LISA also allows maintain laryngeal function to maintain the PEEP or FRC, whereas in uh, ensure there may be a abduction of the vocal cords and loss of the PEEP. And LISA also has the potential to improve patient comfort by avoiding the mechanical ventilation. Next slide, please. So why LISA? There are a lot of evidence, uh, like uh, in Cochrane meta-analysis, there are close to 16 studies which have demonstrated when surfactant is given by LISA, they have found that significant decrease in the BPD rates, need for mechanical ventilation, mortality rate, and even severe intraventricular hemorrhage uh, have come down. Next slide, please. Next slide, ma'am. Apart from uh, Cochrane studies, there are other trials like avoidance of mechanical ventilation and take care trial. In take care trial, they have compared with LISA versus Insure close to 100 neonates. They have enrolled who are who weigh less than uh, who are less than 34 weeks gestation and requiring an FIO2 of more than 0.4. So the primary outcome they observed was the intubation requirement for these neonates who are on LISA uh, uh, were around 30 percent, whereas 45 percent of Insure group required the intubation. And the duration of CPAP also is uh, slightly uh, is more lesser and uh, when compared to the insured group and duration of ventilation is also very less in uh, LISA group when compared with the insured group. Next slide, please. Now. Sir, are there any predictors for missed failure? Those CRP more than 10 milligram per liter and those neonates who received complete course of antenatal corticosteroids and infants received less than 200 milligram per kg dose of surfactant and hypothermia before missed therapy, these neonates are more prone for, more prone for missed failure. Next slide, please. Next slide, ma'am. So there are different techniques for tracheal catheterization, such as colon method, Hobart method, take care method, Kirlonsko method, and Sonshur method. In these methods, they have used different devices for the delivery of the surfactant, such as four to five French feeding tubes, 16 gauze angiocath, five French feeding tube, and four to five French feeding tube, uh, and different uh, sedation medications also. Each study used different uh, sedation medications, and few studies have not used sedation medications also. Next slide, ma'am. Next slide, ma'am. Ma'am, go to next slide, ma'am. Uh, so, no RCTs have looked for the use of pre-medication for LISA, but expert opinion suggests that pre-medication may be considered. A retrospective review by Decker et al. showed there was an improved comfort score during LISA when sedation was given. However, there was a slight trend to more ventilation when it was used. Some practices to give awake sedation with nal naloxone may cause apnea or shallow breathing. Uh, so we should keep the atropine as reserve because few neonates may develop prolonged bradycardia. Uh, so at that time, we have to use the atropine if they are not responding with either neopop or positive pressure ventilation. The use of sucrose and swaddling seems to be tolerated very well and reduce the risk of apnea associated with the fentanyl administration. Next slide, ma'am. LISA procedure. This procedure should be performed by a person who is exper experienced in surfactant administration. Uh, prior to that, the surfactant should be warmed by gently rolling over the palms, both palms at least for eight minutes, or just by keeping the vial in room temperature for 20 minutes and we should not make it stand for more than 30 minutes as it increases the viscosity of the surfactant and don't, don't shake the surfactant ever and don't keep it under radiant warmer. 
ensure that CPAP circuits and fixation of tubings over the cap is adequate and snugly fit. Uh, alternatively, a 5 French feeding tube would be cut 1 cm beyond 20 cm black mark or OG tube can be used for administration of surfactant by keeping it in a freezer for a minimum of 2 hours to increase the stiffness of the OG tube. Next slide, ma'am. After direct laryngoscopy, either Lisa catheter, a feeding tube or ET size of 2 would be inserted with its stick 1 cm beyond the vocal pods uh, visible to the vocal cord guide. Laryngoscope would be taken out and catheter would be stabilized on the side of mouth to prevent the dislodgement of the catheter. During the procedure, CPAP won't be interrupted and keep mouth closed to, uh, to maintain the C, uh, P per FRC. An infant should be connected to a pulse oximeter and oxygen saturation and heart rate have to be monitored throughout the procedure. And a timer would be started at the time of the insertion of laryngoscope blade. Administer the surfactant over 30 to 60 seconds through the feeding tube after taking out the laryngoscope and closing the mouth. Timer would be stopped once the catheters are taken out. Next slide, ma'am. However, with any procedure, there are problems with even with LISA. M main problem they encountered is failure to insert the catheter through the vocal cords at first attempt. Because these feeding tubes are flexible, they may be kinking and uh, use of uh, magles forceps is associated with uh, expertise. So this can be encountered by adequate training and use of the stiffer catheters such as Lisa cath or surfactant. cath. And while instilling the surfactant, there may be a significant surfactant reflex, which can be identify identified by failure to improve in the lung function and observing the tracheal surfactant reflex and recovery of the surfactant from the OG tube aspirates. Even acute desaturation and bradycardia can be found in neonates. It may be attributed due to the use of direct laryngoscopy by stimulation of the vagus nerve or by the surfactant block of the tube, and which can be overcome by giving atropine pre medication for direct laryngoscopy and for surfactant block by slower administration of the surfactant. A need for positive pressure ventilation may be required in a LISA procedure, also, at least for some 10 to 30 percent neonates. Studies with uh, they have shown studies also studied regarding the continuous monitoring of saturation seem to indicate that laryngoscopy is more often the source of side effects than the surfactant installation itself. Slight increase in the risk of focal intestinal perforation is also noted in a subset of extremely premature neonates ranging of uh, with a gestational age around 23 to 24 weeks. This may be attributed to the distension of fragile intestinal wall in consequence of the positive end expiratory pressure. Uh, while giving the non-invasive ventilation. But clearly, this has to be followed in more detail. Next slide, ma'am. While we are using feeding tubes and vascular catheters, they may have perforation at the tip, uh, tip of the feeding tube. So while instilling the surfactant, there may be a reflex through the upper pore of the feeding tube. So, and uh, while if you are inserting too deep into the, too deep, there may be a unilateral surfactant deposition. And to decrease the depth of the insertion, if we shorten the uh, catheter or feeding tube, they may pose risk of mucosal injury by creating the sharp edges. By above surfactant reflex, and uh, there may uh, reflex, there may be lesser uh, delivery of the surfactant than the desired. And if you are not stabilized the catheter, there may be chances of the dislodgement of catheter once we have closed the mouth, and it can be prevented by magal forceps. If you use magal forceps, there may be chances of more time consumption, more trauma, more agitation, and more CPAP leak. Next slide, ma'am. There are newer concerns also, consensus like leak around CPAP, CPAP with LISA by using the narrower catheters. Next slide, ma'am. Take home message. Su surfactant may be given to preterm neonates who are less than 34 weeks gestation with RDS, stabilized and CPAP, who require a PEEP of 6 cm or more and an FIO2 of 0.3 to maintain saturation more than 91%. Early insure may be used for preterm neonates less than 34 weeks gestation with established RDS and who satisfy the criteria for surfactant administration. There is a lot of literature which suggests, uh, which suggests that LISA may be pre preferred over insure for surfactant administration in preterm neonates less than 34 weeks gestation with RDS. LISA results in a lesser need for mechanical ventilation within 72 hours and any time. LISA lowers the risk of death or BPD and air leaks compared with intubation and surfactant administration. Thank you. But I have to hurry because a lot of slides are there. No, Satish, that was a fantastic presentation.